पास जाते हैं समझते हैं Lectura de los profetas de Kiel. Así dice el Señor. Los sacaré de las naciones, los reuniré de entre los pueblos y los traeré de vuelta a su tierra. Los rociaré como un agua pura y quedarán purificados. Los purificaré de todas sus impurezas y de todos sus símbolos y dolores. Les daré un corazón nuevo y pondré dentro de ustedes un espíritu nuevo. Quitaré de su carne este corazón de piedra y les daré un corazón de carne. Pondré dentro de ustedes mi espíritu y haré que caminen según mis mandamientos, que observen mis leyes y que las pongan en práctica. Y dirán en el país que ya se sabe, ustedes serán mi pueblo y yo seré su Dios. Palabra de Dios.
Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Jesús dijo, ustedes son la sal de la tierra, pero si la sal se vuelve insípida, ¿cómo podrá ser salada de nuevo? Ya no sirve para nada, por lo que si se tira afuera y es pisoteada por la gente. Ustedes son la luz del mundo. ¿Cómo se puede esconder una ciudad asentada sobre un monte? Nadie enciende una lámpara para taparla con un cajón. La ponen más bien sobre un candelero y alumbra a todos los que están en la casa. Hagan pues que brille su luz ante los hombres 
que vean estas buenas obras y por ello den gloria al Padre de ustedes que está en los cielos. Queridas hermanas y hermanos, esta es la palabra del Señor. Gloria a Dios, Señor Jesús. Tomen asiento. El Evangelio nos dice que somos llamados a vivir como la luz, como la luz del Señor en las tinieblas del mundo. Sabemos, sabemos las tinieblas. Después se la han pasado con la pandemia, con todas sus dificultades económicas, las dificultades de las familias, las dificultades de nuestro país. Un gran tinieblas. Pero hoy el Señor nos llama a vivir como la luz, la luz en medio de tiniebla, sin miedo, con esperanza en la realidad del futuro en la fe. Esto es por nosotros. Un llamado de ti, pero un llamado que debemos responder. ¿Por qué? Sin ninguna respuesta de parte de nosotros, no me está la esperanza en el mundo. Pero por nosotros hoy estos son dineros. Estos están, ellos están por nosotros la realidad de la esperanza. Porque ellos brillan con la luz del Señor. En el gran don del sacramento de conformación es un inicio nuevo. Un inicio nuevo por los por ustedes, por ellos y vivir como la luz, alumbrar el mundo con la fe. Pero la fe que ellos reciben de ustedes, en sus familias, los padres, los abuelos, las abuelas, los padrinos, toda la comunidad de esta parroquia, que forme la posibilidad, la posibilidad de la fe en ellos. Entonces, gracias. Gracias por el don de la fe. Gracias por el ejemplo de la fe. Gracias por la luz. Y por esa razón quiero hablar con ellos en modo particular. Let me ask Are you tired of wearing that hat? Are you tired of all the other stuff you had to do this past year? Are you wondering if this year going to be like last year and all of a sudden school is closed and I'm going to be going to school on a new and we all Well, today, today Jesus invites you, and Jesus challenges you. And if you let him, Jesus will enable you to take off the mask. Not this mask, not the face mask. That really is a sign of confirmation. It's a sign that you care enough about the gift of your own health and the health of others to wear the uncomfortable mask. So no, not this mask. But Jesus is invited, and Jesus is challenged. And if you let him, Jesus will enable you to take off a mask that's on much higher and covers a lot more. A mask which, if you don't take it off, then you're going to get sick. Then on the inside, you die. Because it's the mask that covers your heart. It covers your heart. You know, we all mask who we are. It's safer. Don't take the risk of being who you want. But you know from your first days of religious education that who you are, who we all are, is the image of God in the world. Now, when I say image of God, we know. It, obviously, it doesn't mean that we all look like God. We all look differently than God we do. We could be foreign if we all look alike. No, the image of God, to live in the image of God, that means to be able to to love. Not the love of warm, fuzzy feelings. Not the love of everything happy and going well. Not what the world sometimes tells you to love, which is really using another person for my purposes. No, to live in the image of God means I recognize that in each and every one of us the goodness of God lives. Now that doesn't mean we're always good. That doesn't mean everything's always perfect. But the goodness of God, the ability to recognize the truth and speak it, 
the ability to recognize what's the right thing to do and the courage to do it. The willingness to look out for people in need around me and see the image of God in them and respond to their needs. That's the image of God. And today, today Jesus is challenging you and enabling you to unmask that image of God for others. But the world says, don't do that. Don't worry about speaking the truth. Why do you get ahead? Don't worry about doing the right thing. Do what you gotta do. Don't worry about others. Get ahead of them all the day. But you say no. I'm the light. I'm the hope. I'm willing to let the, the Spirit of God, the image of God, be unmasked in me, as me, with all my mistakes and failures. But to do that, you need some help. And Jesus provides it. He gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I was a kid and being confirmed, I grew up over a blessed sacrament on Forest Day. So when I was a kid, confirmation was kind of scary because the bishop showed up and he would ask such questions. So you always hope they sat you behind some tall kid and the bishop couldn't see you and you didn't get asked the question. Well, today I show up and I'm going to ask a question. Define the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right now, calm kid. You're going to point to that spirit on your shoulder. And you say, there you go, Holy Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, you can't define the Holy Spirit. Because when you define something, you got it all figured out. You put it in a box, it's done. You can't define yourself, right? You don't want to be put in a box, and trust me, you never got yourself all figured out. Now, we don't define the Holy Spirit, we describe the Holy Spirit. And the best description of the Holy Spirit I've ever heard came from somebody by the name of Anselm. St. Anselm lived a thousand years ago. So it's not even a pretty good description because nobody's come up with anything better. St. Anselm said, the Holy Spirit is the kiss between God the Father and Jesus his Son. The kiss between God the Father and Jesus his Son. You know yourself, when you give your parents a kiss, it's a lot more than your lips touching mom's cheek. Or a lot of you now, you kiss mom on the top of her head just to remind you you're taller than she is now. Well, that action, that says a lot more than you could ever put into words. That action expresses the love of your family, the love that brought you into the world, the love that keeps you going, the love that lets you put up with your parents when you think you're out of date, the love that lets them put up with you. You drive them crazy. The family love of the Trinity. Oi, ellos reciben el gran don del Espíritu Santo. Pero, ¿quién es el Espíritu Santo? Sabemos que si no se ve el Espíritu Santo, pero ¿quién es el Espíritu Santo? San Anselmo nos dice que el Espíritu Santo es el beso. El beso ante Dios Padre y su río de Dios. El amor familiar de la Trinidad. Ellos reciben. Hoy, ellos están besados por Dios. Es una cosa maravillosa. Una cosa que ellos reciben. El amor, el beso de Dios para vivir con la luz. Debemos agradecer al Señor por esta posibilidad, esta posibilidad que ellos reciben en contexto de la vida familiar. And that's what I want to talk to you about something very important. You know, my mother and father, like many of your mothers and fathers, or maybe your brother and mother, they came from another country here. They left everything behind. And why did they do it? They did it to make life better for us. My parents did it to make life better for me and my brother. But there were times when my brothers and I thought, they're stuck back there. 
You don't realize that here we don't even that way. Maybe you have the same feeling. But one thing I want you never to forget. Never forget where you came from. Never forget that your parents and grandparents left everything for you and gave you the greatest, most valuable treasure you will ever have. The love that you find in your family and the faith that your family gave you. No matter where you go, no matter how successful you become, never lose that. Because that's part of who you are. And that's why tonight, I want you to do something. Tonight, I want you to talk to God. Talk to God in your own words. You know, all too often we think prayer is saying nice, polite things to God. God doesn't want to nice, polite things. He wants to hear from you. So when you have a good day, you talk to God about it. God's prayer is a great day. This is why. Thanks. When you have a bad day, you can yell at God. Look at the Bible. People have been yelling at God for thousands of years. He's a big guy. He's a big If you don't think God is there, and we all have those days, ask him where he went. And keep asking. Because you're going to find him. And he has already found you. Tonight, I want you to talk to God about three very important things. First, what does it mean to you? to receive the Holy Spirit, to be kissed by God. Maybe you don't know. It's okay. Just start talking. God's going to give you the word. And that conversation, that's the never ending. Second, what for you is the biggest obstacle, the highest hurdle, the toughest part of having the courage of unmasking your heart and living in the image of God for others? Because I'll be honest with you, it's a lot tougher for you than it was for us years ago. You have the whole world on your phone. And you know better than I That's going to be pretty nasty. So what for you is the biggest obstacle, the highest hurdle, the toughest part of having the courage to unmask your heart and be the image of God? And then third, just say thanks. The real thing, biblical thing, not the thanks you say to the guy in the pizzeria and she grabs his wife and go. Biblical thanks means first, I recognize the gift. You've been kissed. Second, I take that gift and I make it part of who I am. And third, because I recognize the gift and it's part of who I am, you have to live it out for others. Because when you do that, then through you, because you're here, the world is kissed by God. Entonces, pronuncian ustedes hasta 
que todos sus obras, que todos sus soluciones, creen en el Señor, Padre Todopoderoso, Creador del cielo y de la tierra. Creo en Jesucristo, su Hijo único, el Señor lo hizo, que nació de la tierra de la vida, padeció y murió por nosotros, resucitó y está sentado a la derecha del Padre. Creo en el Espíritu Santo, Señor y la Dios de vida, que no es a ser comunicado y en modo singular por el sacramento de la conversión, como el cuidado a los apóstoles y el día de Pentecostés. Creo en la Santa Iglesia Católica, en la comunidad de los santos, en el perdón de los pecados, en la resurrección de los muertos y en la vida eterna. Esta es nuestra fe. Esta es la fe de la familia que es la iglesia que nos gloriamos en profetar en Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Now, in the ancient world, when you were going on a journey, this is the journey you're going on in Rome. The old people in the family would stretch out their hands at the sign of God stretching himself out to you. And they would place the blessing on your heart. And the idea was that blessing would be like a life that would die in your death. Father Hernan and I, on behalf of the whole family of the parish, we now stretch out our hands to you because God is stretching himself out to you. And all that would be the Holy Spirit. Servant, no matter where you go, no matter how dark the road of life might get, if you let it, the light of the Holy Spirit will guide you to Christ. Yo soy el poderoso, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que ha hecho nacer de nuevo a estos Dios mío, por medio del agua y del Espíritu Santo, librándolos del pecado. Escuche nuestra oración y envíe sobre ellos el Espíritu Santo Consolador, Espíritu de sabiduría y inteligencia, Espíritu de consejo y de acompañamiento. Espíritu de ciencia, de piedad, en el santo de amor, por Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Amen. In the ancient world, oil had three purposes. You needed a certain amount of oil in your food every day, or your insides dried up, and they died. So it became a sign of God's life. But God's life is deep down within, keeping us alive. Oil would be poured into cups and moved, so it would protect them and it could heal. But very importantly, the oil would bring the skin back together and there wouldn't be a scar. Your anointing today for God's holy presence in your life. But through you, God's healing his presence in a very wounded world out there. So remember, don't need a scar. And oil will the heaven of the head of man, so you may be decision. Take it from an old high school teacher. The decisions you make in high school, good or bad, will affect you for the rest of your life. And this is when you learn how to make good decisions. So you're anointed to make good decisions. To decide to do the right thing.
recibe el Señor tu adoración y te ofrece de sus pies. Y tú que has perfeccionado en ellos la semejanza con tu Dios, haz que con la participación en el memorial de tu sacrificio, que nos mereció a tu Espíritu Santo, puede dar con tu vida el testimonio al del Señor reivindicado. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. El Señor es el Señor. Porque él, después que tú hubieras ido, donde está sentado a tu derecha, derramó sobre tus hijos y los hijos que el Espíritu Santo que había prometido. Por eso, Señor, con todos los padres, te aclamamos ahora el cielo y el cielo.
Vamos a darle una clase o varias clases. Primero, la clase vamos a darle a los confirmados de esta noche. Thank you. 
God is calling some of the young people of this town to serve the service of God's family as priests and religious citizens. Now, you see the difference between the parish priests and the people who work here, and you know it. You could make that difference to somebody else. Now, don't say, oh, not me, somebody else. It's not the old rule. But they can hear about that here and listen to God's voice. Which may be calling you to a life of service. The priest is for our living Let us stand with our Lord. Okay, you Amen. Okay. 